Good evening, everyone. As usual, before I speak, I speak in the name of my ancestors, the father of my country, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, the goddess of my country, Ezzelie, and my grandparents who taught me the ways of the ancestors, and that I may continue my fight against barbaric Christianity, slavery, and capitalist exploitation. Uh, tonight's presentation was actually uh, meant for the Haitian Studies Association Conference, which will be held, I believe, November 1st through the 4th in New Orleans, I believe, at the University of Xavier. However, I have a prior engagement, so I, was un I am unable to attend the conference, so I decided to uh, actually videotape my presentation as it is connected to my forthcoming lecture, which, uh, uh, which is scheduled simultaneously uh, during the conference. So anyway, my talk was actually meant to be uh, on um, a new concept that is not new, it's a concept that I have been developing for the past uh, 10, 15 years on um, what I call Haitian idealism, um, which is uh, Haitian transcendental idealism, which is the form of uh, epistemology that would develop uh, uh, amongst the Haitian people. Um, however, instead of tackling the issue from an epistemological standpoint from the very beginning, uh, I, I actually decided to tackle the issue from a sociological, ontological perspective um, as Martin Heidegger uh, attempted to do. The reason why I decided to attempt or tackle the issue of what is the epistemological orientation of the uh, Haitian people, if they had one, was because the reason I chose to tackle it ontologically was simply because uh, at the time in, in grad school, I, um, Susan Buck Morris, who was working with Teresa Brenning at Florida Atlantic University, was the actual visiting professor. And I served as a TA for her, and she had, um, she was looking into what would be eventually become her book on uh, Haiti, uh, where she traces uh, the development of the Haitian Revolution or the Haitian Revolution as a model for Hegel's master-slave dialectic. Where I disagree with uh, uh, Buck Morris is the fact that uh, the Haitian Revolution or the originating moments of the Haitian Revolution was not a dialectical movement, as I argued, I argue it was an anti-dialectical uh, process that comes out of Haitian transcendental idealism, which is which stems from the metaphysics of the Haitian people. It stems from the voodoo metaphysics of the Haitian people. So Haitian epistemology comes out of uh, Haitian voodoo, vilocom metaphysics. And is on that basis, I decided in order to constitute Haitian epistemology or, or Haitian transcendental idealism, I had to trace what were its elements. Um, so I argue there are three elements uh, tied into Haitian transcendental idealism. The first, as I previously mentioned, is what I call anti-dialectic. That is, unlike there is a parallel between Haitian transcendental idealism and the transcendental idealism that would develop among the German people. The reason why I argue that Haitian epistemology, I name Haitian epistemology as Haitian transcendental idealism is the mere fact that in Haitian epistemology or Haitian metaphysics, bon Dieu, or God created the world, but it's a parallel world that God created. In Vodou, there is a, there is a parallel world, the world of Vilokan and this mirror image, which is the world of everyday living or lived experience. So the world of Vilokan and the world of phenomena. So Kant makes the distinction in critiquing in Kantian transcendental idealism, Kant attempts to critique uh, empiricism as well as European rationalism because they both end up doing the same thing. European rationalism leads to uh, 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 one constructing the entire world. Out, how do you construct the entire world out of your head? Because Cartesian metaphysics begins with the 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 the, the rest cogitans, the the thinking subject. Well, it's the same process in, in, in British empiricism. So you have Kant attempts to synthesize British empiricism with continental rationalism to some extent. Not really. 
So he makes a distinction between the world of phenomenon and the world of phenomenon is, is, is simply how the world appears to us. The world that we experience is relative to what he calls the categories of experience in terms of space, time, and the understanding. So we impose the constructs that we see in the world. Now, because our minds impose, he uh, Kant calls that the, 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 um, the, the form of understanding and the form of sensibility, because our mind imposes the reality that we see or as it appears to us, he argues that we can, in the critique of pure reason, we can never have access to noumena, the things as they are in, them, in themselves. Now, what I argue is that where I draw the parallel between Kant and Haitian epistemology, or what I call Haitian transcendental idealism or Villocant idealism, is the fact that the world of Villocant is actually a platonic world of forms, the loise, what Haitians call loise are concepts, ideas, ideas that exist in the world of Villocant that we can ascertain and apply to the world of phenomena so we can experience and live fully to the fullest, fullest extent. So what I argue is that the world of Villocan is the world of noumena, where the, the laws, the concepts, or platonic forms exist. And the world of phenomena is how those things, how we experience the world and how we impose via our num, our tibonunge, globonunge, and our bodies, how we impose a reality based on our levels of development. So for me, there is a distinction in Haitian metaphysics, which comes out of Vodou, which makes a distinction between Noumena and phenomena, the world of Bilokan and, and, and the world as we experience it, the real world. And, it, and the world of Bilokan, so, and whereas Kant argues we can never have access to the things in themselves, how they appear or how they exist in, in, in themselves. In Haitian Vodou, you can, because we have uh, extrasensory perceptions, we have uh, uh, paranormal experiences, we, we, we can go into trances. And those are forms of the understanding of the human body that we can impose uh, uh, or that constitute our existence that gives us access to the world of phenomena. So we can actually access the world of phenomena as God created it so that we can apply the concepts that we get. For example, a, a brilliant example is Ogu. Jean-Jacques Dessalines during the Haitian Revolution becomes the embodiment of Ogu. As a Wongun, he has access he goes into trances. He has access to Ogu, the concept of Ogu. And it's a dialectical exchange between the world of phenomenon and the world of noumena. Because not only does Jean-Jacques Dessalines is able to ascertain or have access to the world of noumena via trances and extrasensory perception, but in, in his death, he becomes a loi himself because he embodied the political warrior of Ogu. So there's this dialectical connection between the world of phenomena and the world of noumena or vilokan and, and Haitian um, vodou. So what I argue in, 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 since 2007 is that there are three processes that come or that constitutes Haitian epistemology or Haitian transcendental idealism. It's what I call uh, the anti-dialectical process. So if you make a connection between German idealism and Haitian, uh, Haitian transcendental idealism, because for me, German idealism begins with Kant, Kantian transcendental idealism. Haitian transcendental idealism begins with Vodou. So there's a direct parallel or evolution between how uh, uh, epistemologically German idealism would develop and how epistemologically uh, uh, Haitian idealism uh, would develop. So whereas we go from Kant to Hegel to, excuse me, Marx and to the phenomenology of Herschel and Heidegger, well, I argue the same thing that while well, the same processes have been taking place in Haiti, we go from Vodou to Haitian transcendental uh, uh, idealism, and from there we get to a hermeneutical phenomenology, and from there we get into within Haitian transcendental idealism, you instead of the ontological ethics as Kant will deduce within his, his uh, epistemological position, we get a reciprocal justice that comes out of uh, uh, Haitian transcendental idealism. So, and then the, the process, the dialectical process that uh, Hegel would take out of 
uh, uh, Kantian um, transcendental idealism as it stems from the world of phenomena. In Haiti, we, 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 we get an anti-dialectical process. So whereas Hegel would lead to the Frankfurt School's negative dialectics, within Haitian epistemology or Haitian transcendental idealism, you get an anti-dialectical uh, a, a, a process to uh, uh, purposive rationality or to the historical processes. So you have three elements. And from there, I argue, you, you can deduce another form, a, a methodology for the social sciences that come out of uh, a Haitian transcendental idealism, which I call uh, phenomenological structuralism. So you have uh, Vodou, the metaphysics or ontology of Vodou, which, was, which would produce uh, uh, Haitian transcendental ideal epistemologically, it produces Haitian transcendental idealism, and from there you get the ethical or, or the normative ethic that comes out of that is a reciprocal justice as opposed to a deontological ethic, uh, a, as in uh, uh, um, Kantian transcendental idealism. And then from there you can deduce a methodology which I've done and published, peer reviewed, published. Uh, called phenomenological structuralism. So the anti-dialectical, epistemologically speaking, now we have to make sure we make a distinction when we speak about epistemology, the distinction between methodology and epistemology. So the epistemological processes that would come out of Haitian transcendental idealism, anti-dialectics, re reciprocal uh, uh, justice, I argue produces produces what I call a methodology for how we can understand how we know what we know in the world in terms of the social sciences and physical sciences, which I argue, which I call phenomenological structuralism. So I began, as I stated earlier, I began my approach from an ontological, sociological perspective, looking at the Haitian Revolution and historically what, how the Re Haitian Revolution commences with what we call the, the voodoo ceremony of Bois Cailon. But for me, that's an anti-dialectical process. It's not a dialectical process. And I need to make sure we all understand the distinction between the German dialectical process that would emerge out of Kantian transcendental idealism and Hegelian dialectics, and what I am calling an anti-dialectical process. And that's published in, in my peer-reviewed journal article called the anti-dialectical signification of Ezzy Lee Duntar and, and, and Bois Caillemont of the Haitian Revolution. The difference is, dialectically speaking, the dialectical process applies to the affranchi. This is the mulatto elites and the petty bourgeois blacks, such as Toussaint, Dessalines. These guys were, were affranchi. They made the distinction between themselves. There's, there's actually three groups here. The, the white mulattoes, I'm sorry, the, the whites, the mulattoes, the petty bourgeois blacks who are born on the island and the Africans themselves. Now remember, two-thirds of the Africans were directly from Africa when the Haitian Revolution commences in 1791. So what, what I argue is that the mulatto elites in the Afranchi in that particular essay, their process is a dialectical process because they're actually fighting for equality of opportunity, recognition, and distribution with whites. The Africans, when we look at the Africans with Mumbo Fatima, when we look at Cecil Fatima, when we look at uh, Bukman, when we look at Makinda, what I argue is they're, they're not fighting for equality of opportunity, recognition, and distribution. They simply want total liberty and freedom from anything that resembles the colonial system. And that, I argue, re required an anti-dialectical approach to, to the historical process. A, a deconstruction of the entire social system in and of itself. And that anti-dialectical process comes out of Haitian Vodou because there is an imbalance, remember, and Vodou, the, the aim is for balance or harmony between the phenomenal world and the numinal world of the world of Vilokan. So what I argue is that there, the slavery, the slave, the slavery as a system caused an, an imbalance between how the, the, the Africans ought to be living and how they are living under the colonial system. So therefore, there, there's a call, there is, there is a clarion call for total liberty and equality against the colonial system, which is not the call that the Malawi elites and the Afghan Shia are, are, are making. So I argue that comes out is because of how they know. 
how they know that there needs to be balance between the phenomenal world, the world of phenomena, and the and the world as it ought to be, as expressed in Vilokan in the world of noumena. So therefore, there is a clarion call for total liberty and equality against the colonial system, a total rapture with the colonial system. And that anti-dialectical process comes out of the epistemological basis of Haitian voodoo metaphysics, which I argue is a transcendental idealistic uh, uh, epistemology. The father, uh, uh, furthermore, I argue out of that in the provinces and mountains following the death of Dessaline, uh, the, the voodoo met metaphysics would give rise to its own form of system and social integration. So the system and social integration that uh, uh, the, the Africans in the provinces and mountains would implement to recursively reorganize and reproduce their existence in the world comes out of the voodoo metaphysics. Hence my book, The Voodoo Ethic and the Spirit of Communism, because it gives rise to a practical consciousness, a form of system and social integration. So not only does it give, does voodoo and uh, the, the ontology and metaphysics of voodoo gives us an epistemology, which I call transcendental idealism, but it the, and within that epistemology, you get an anti-dialectical uh, uh, process, and you get a form of reciprocal justice. And then out of that, I, I, I come to constitute contemporarily uh, uh, my method in the social sciences, which is called Phenomenological Structuralism, which is published by that same title. All of these articles are peer-reviewed journal articles that can be uh, 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 ascertained through your library or look them up online and they're all peer reviewed. So as we all know, we it, as academics, we argue at, at conferences and in journal articles and in books. Now also, I want to conclude by saying this. There is a, it, it, there is an alternative form of, there is no feminism that comes out of Haitian transcendent, Haitian epistemology. What that means is, and I, I, I have an article coming out called Haitian Epistemology and this a feminist uh, 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 construct. Because in this clarion call for total liberty and equality, the Haitians do not draw a distinction between men, women, transgender, what have you. As you all know, within Vaudou, they're very liberal. Everything is accepted because the understanding is total freedom, total equality without distinctions. There's no distinctions made, oh, women's rights, gay rights, blah, blah, blah. No, it's total liberty and equality for all without distinction. So there is a, a feminism that developed within Haitian transcendental idealism, unlike the West, where women were discriminated, discriminated against, men, etc. There is not that need within Vaudou to make that distinction between because this total libertarian concept and total equality that would egalitarianism that would come out of the historical process uh, uh, of Haitian transcendental idealism. There is a clarion call for total liberty equality without distinction. So there is a, a an a feminism that developed. Any attempt to say that there is a feminist tradition, quote unquote, in the uh, uh, in Haiti, is an attempt to apply. Uh, Western conception, white Western conception of feminism within the Haitian context. That may be applicable if we're talking about uh, the bourgeoisie within the, the, the Haitian mulatto elite bourgeoisie who seek to replicate the lifestyle of the French, their French, American, and Canadian counterparts. But in the provinces and the mountains, that type of feminism is, is, it, it does not exist because there is a, a feminism that comes out of voodoo and Haitian transcendental idealism, which is its epistemological uh, derivative. So there is no need for that, that, that which I argue in my forthcoming essay, uh, there is no need for that, that, that type of, of feminism. Any attempt to apply a Western feminist ideology is, is, is just that. The other thing is, and I will conclude with this, is I don't buy into the concept of Afrocentrism, Afrocentricity, or grouping Haitian, two things, grouping Haitian transcendental idealism within an Afrocentric paradigm, which for me is a reactive paradigm, A, and it, it comes out of 
the tradition of uh, 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 the English tradition in America and, and this need uh, 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 the, 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 to develop an Afrocentric thinking, that, 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 that's buffoonery uh, uh, for, for, for me. Unless you want to argue that uh, Vaudou comes out of the African milieu, but because this, the, uh, if we can apply an anthropological co concept called the, the, the psychic unity of man, because we experience the same uh, material resource framework, of course there will be a parallel between uh, elements of how Western conceptions and paradigms develop and how we Africans develop Western conceptions. The major difference, I would argue, is that uh, this need for domination to dominate nature really doesn't it come out of uh, uh, Vodou and, 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 and the African uh, paradigm, but there's still parallels between the, the, the ever-increasing rationalization that took place in the West and the ever-increasing rationalization that is taking place, uh, that needs to take place so we can start to constitute uh, what I'm calling Haitian idealism so we can develop methodologies and a, a form of science within Haiti itself and then uh, in America, so we, we, we Haiti can the, the, uh, um, can develop not necessarily along the lines of the West, which sought to dominate Mother Nature, but to develop the society so that we can ha so the, the the people can uh, can live comfortably within the society. And lastly, there is no such thing as epistemological anarchy, as Paul Feyerbach, who attempts to apply the logic of postmodernism, poststructural thought to uh, uh, epistemological issues. Now, what he meant by that is uh, uh, science, uh, 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 science does not have a leg up on any other method within the society. The society. That, that's, that's buffoonery. We, we, clearly, science has more predictive value than astrology. We often, most of us can agree to that unless you're in Haiti where it appears as though there's an epistemological anarchy taking place because Everybody is free to hold whatever value, but epistemologically speaking, there is no anarchic epistemological position that one can can ascertain. So anyway, I, I, uh, all of my work ties in because I develop my theories and methodologies out of what I'm calling Haitian transcendental idealism, where I develop my method for the social sciences, which is called phenomenological structuralism, where I attempt to use that very methodology to understand, for example, the black-white achievement gap, as most of my uh, 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 journal articles emphasize or uh, attempt to look at and understand the black-white achievement gap. Also, uh, globalization, I, I also attempt to use Haitian transcendental idealism. I won't go into it tonight. Uh, I will be speaking uh, November 18th. Um, uh, to further develop uh, as my book with Routledge on Haitian epistemology and Haitian transcendental idealism will, will be coming out soon, hopefully in 2018. Um, uh, but all the journal articles are coming out uh, or are out. Uh, the anti-dialectical signification of Bois Caïma in the, uh, um, in the Haitian Revolution. You can access, I, I'll post them online or what have you. Uh, the Protestant ethic and the spirit of communism and the voodoo uh, capitalism and the voodoo ethic and the spirit of communism, where I juxtapose the form of system and social integration that would come out of Vodou vis-a-vis the form of system and social integration that would come out of Christianity. I juxtapose the two, and that was published by the journal Sociology. Um, and we also have... Uh, uh, my, my forthcoming work on Haitian epistemology and a feminism, because there, again, I argue there's no, there's no, the feminist ideology that would develop in the West does not develop in, um, in Haiti. So I look forward to you all coming out to my presentation November 18. I'll also be in New Orleans in March. Uh, um, I'll also be in um, someplace else uh, March 14th, I believe is Dallas. Uh, University of Texas, so don't hold me to that. It's, it might be someplace else. So. so I thank you all, and I hope you enjoy this presentation and my forthcoming work. Please go out, look it up, The Voodoo Ethic and the Spirit of Communism. So, and Haitian Epistemology is a four-volume set that is a five-volume set that's coming out because there's also 
a, a, a piece on Lakuism that will also be emerging because I argue that Lakuism becomes a socioeconomic political system that will come out of Haitian idealism. So anyway, I thank you all and you have a good night.